Hey peeps, Jess here and welcome to Tiny Table Not So Mini Mukbang. Because today we're answering the very important question, what is the best pastry or baked good at Coyle's Bake Shop? For those of you who haven't been to Coyle's before, it is a really adorable bakery in the Greenwood neighborhood of Seattle. It's pretty north. Most of you who are visiting aren't gonna come here, but it is worth it. They make excellent baked goods and today, we're gonna figure out what the best is. Getting one, one of everything. Lime basil, lime basil. And now we're gonna film the rest of it at home. And this is not everything. Oh my goodness, this is not everything. There is tarts, there's more tarts. We actually did not get three things and I'll talk about that in a bit, but first, let's see if I can get a better angle. It's like, yeah, there's, there's some stuff to go through. So I will be putting them all here as we go. And the goal here is just to figure out what is the tastiest. And of course, before we get going, I must ask you to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you'd like more silly mukbang. I will say this one is going to be probably one of the more technical mukbang I've done in that I'm going to be treating this more like how I treat judging desserts. I've been working in food media, for those of you who are new to this channel, since 2012, and I have what's kind of known as the thousand yard dead stare. There are bakers who are afraid of me because of this. It's gonna happen a couple times in this video just because as much as I've tried to just smile on camera, this is a seven year old habit. With that, we're diving right in. Actually, we're gonna go a little bit backwards in time because I had to eat the cream puff at that special moment because you do not let cream puff sit. So let's roll that footage. This is their cream puff filled to order with lavender cream. Lavender's not my favorite, but I am down for trying for the cause. But this crispy, crunchy layer here, this is called crackalin. It's basically a super thin layer of effectively sugar cookie dough. Hold the eggs, it's almost a sugar cookie shortbread. And it creates this lovely, crispy, crunchy pattern. Let's, let's try it. Mmm! This is delicate and lovely and herbal. It is not the lavender you might think. It is not cloying. I think they used fresh lavender in the cream. So it's super smooth cream. And just the thinnest layer of cream puff holding it all in. This is delightful. But yes, if your cream puff is filled to order, always eat it immediately because otherwise it gets mush. Mmm. And the crackling is nice and crunchy too. Really lovely contrast against the smooth, cold creaminess of the lavender. Moving on. And we're back to begin. There's one that I want to do first and just get it done. And that is, oh, this treat. Oh, super excited about this. This is a strawberry tart with lavender cream. And the reason we're doing this one first is two. One, I'm allergic to strawberries, well, allergic. If you wanna catch up on what oral allergy syndrome is, I'm gonna put a link below and above. And the reason I'm starting with this one is one, to get it out of the way and get my allergy out of the way because this is the only allergen I have in this video that I'm at any risk for. But more importantly, the best dessert I've ever had from Coyle's Bake Shop was a mascarpone strawberry and raspberry tart. And so if we're gonna do this, let's just go all out in style. Let's do it. First, I should let you see this, because oh my gosh. Like, we just hit the beginning of strawberry season in Seattle, and this is a freaking jewel box of a tart. I mean, just, arg. Like, look at how red those berries are. I've got like little bits of flower, edible flowers. I can't tell you what species these are. Probably maybe some, just some petals are hanging out. Maybe cornflower petals for that color? Hard to tell what petals they are, but they're pretty. As Beautiful golden crust for the tart shell. I am excited to try this. So let's dive in. And yes, I have a spare fork because I will totally drop at least one fork during the eating of this. There are so many desserts. Oh my gosh. Come on. 
very thick tart shell. Here we go. When in doubt, stab. Oh, this is not going to come across part easily, is it? Nope, nope, nope. We have made breakage. All right. Oh wow, this is such soft cream. Cheers. Most importantly, I do not appear to be having a larger reaction. I won't be eating any more because this is not the smartest move I've made today. But the almond crust is really buttery, really nice almond, little bit of crunch at the end. You've got the herbal softness of the lavender. It's very delicate lavender flavor. And then the strawberry, it's almost just pure sugar. There's not as much intensely strawberry flavor as you might think from something that's this much of a jewel box of its heart. I just, I love that phrasing. <laughs> but it is very delicate, very lovely. I still think I prefer the version I had several years ago, but it had cassis jam and was more of a intensity of flavor than this. This is more like a light early summer picnic tart. Nothing wrong with that. Moving on. All right. So what do we got next? Zoom. Cream scone. <laughs> so. A cream scone, if you haven't had one, often has currants, and you can see the currants in here. They're not raisins, because that's a very classic and traditional way to have it. We have a plate, plate, and then also we have rhubarb jam. So let's try it with and without the jam. A lovely crumb, very crumbly. This is more of an American scone by the look of things, just of how it's, for it's not as butter soft flaky as I think of like a Scottish scone. Jam. It's very crisp and it does have layers. So I'm curious to see how it behaves with the jam. Now I appreciate there's a little bit of sugar on top. Give a little bit of crispness. Ooh, that's some beautiful jam. There's gonna be a lot of rhubarb and a lot of cardamom today. I feel like I'm like back in Stockholm in terms of the amount of cardamom going on. to me is coming off very sweet not unpleasantly sweet but surprisingly sweet and that is because there is vanilla bean in the jam it is a rhubarb vanilla jam almost like a preserve just very you got the stringy ropiness of rhubarb which it's not everyone's jam but it is delicious and it's very it feels like eating spring i do think in this one the rhubarb overwhelms the scone a bit not in a bad way just if you wanted to taste more of the scone put on less jam but it is quite lovely together like I'd like this and a pot of Earl Grey and I'd be really happy moving on okay next up let's do what? let's do cake let's have cake I'm just gonna grab a thing of cake this is the cardamom cake and you can see there's big old chunks of rhubarb in this we can there we go it's studded through our, I believe this is an olive oil cake and there's just a beautiful color to it. It's really nicely golden brown on the outside. This is part of a bundt cake, so would have been in a ring originally. And it is huge. Like, look at this. Look at the size of my face. This is big. Okay. Ooh, it looks nice and soft. Nice and fluffy soft. And I just smell cardamom. It's almost got like a lime note to it, actually. So it smells very citrusy. Citrus and, and spice. Lovely. Let's try it. I'm surprised at how mellow this is. Cardamom to me is one that I often find to be very intense. And it almost tastes like the rhubarb was poached in something because of how meltingly tender it is. So when I'm tasting this, I'm getting more of a, as it finishes I'm tasting more of the cardamom but when you start it is that lime and that softness of the rhubarb and then you get like the butter sugar notes from the exterior because that's gonna have some nice caramelization 
very lovely. I actually think I like this more than I like the Tarte today, which is saying something because I'm not a cardamom fan at all. And it is giving me a bit of a headache. We can discuss my headaches another day. I get reactions to a lot of things and my having a headache doesn't really mean much in the grand scheme of stuff. Moving on. This here, here cake. Um, I think I got a macaron. This one's sesame, I think this is sesame tahini. I'm gonna try and list things as we go. These are really huge chunkers. Like, look at the size of these. Oh, tip of the day, or like knowledge of the day. You see these like little bitty dudes, the bubbles here? This is called feet. So if you tell someone that is making a macaron that they have lovely feet, that is not being gross and that's not a fetishy thing, that's you're saying that the development of the rise looks really good. And it'll confuse everyone around you, but it'll be a nice thing to say to the baker because it is a nod to, you did well. It just sounds weird. So let's try it. This is huge. It's just very tall, very soft actually. Like I, I'm used to less give and that's not a bad thing. Smells like sesame. Mm. Very soft. Definitely not sweet. I was expecting this kind of a nice spiced pepper note of a hit going at the end. So it kind of goes boop of spice. There's a mellowness to it from the tahini, and it's just nice. Put you here. Try another macaron rather. They're all just, they're huge. These are all just giant. Let's see, will it focus? There we go. Like, look at how huge this is. Look at my hand. Look at this macaron. Oh my goodness. Okay, this looks like a, might have a caramel filling. I have no clue what I'm eating for the macarons. I do have information on what I'm eating, but I kind of like being surprised with macaron since they're such a simple flavor for the macaron base. I'm not tasting very much. Kind of a caramel note. It's very, very mellow, whatever it is. But the macaron itself is very meltingly soft too. You just, you can see here, they're very soft, very dense macaron. And freaking huge. Just, dear goodness. Pieces of your last macaron. This is the lavender one. I can see the lavender bits on it. There we go. Not as big, but big. Lots of lavender today. Mm. I, this is the most lavender. I feel like I'm eating a laundry sachet. I'm not a lavender fan. Have lavender. <laughs> Next, let's go for the candelay. Candelay time. So candelay are really, really cool if you haven't had one before. They have a special mold they're cooked in and it creates a super caramelized just exterior and you have a really soft custardy interior. Oh, here. I'll just get it, I'll get it. So to me, the sign of a good candelay is that it should be nearly black. It should look like a hockey puck and be pretty solid. So here, come on, focus little camera. It fell earlier, so it's being a very good sport about everything, but I'm not the best. But you can see that color, even the bottom is just, it's dark. I feel like a squirrel hoarding all my prizes here. That's okay, so let's, let's get this open actually. Cause that's the best part. Alright, so it is definitely a little bit less soft on the inside than I might like to see just off the bat. I like them to be almost a loose custard in texture, but that doesn't mean it's bad. That's just what I'm looking for in a cuddle. I am seeing a fair bit of vanilla bean fleckage, which is good, so. Mm. Good flavor here. I'd actually like it to be more burnt 
Now, we can get into that argument all day about how burnt something is and how reactive you are to just the burnt flavors. I feel like they could have gone a little bit further for me. I think for someone who's not used to having a condole, is gonna think this tastes like charcoal. Like, there's someone who thinks this tastes like a briquette. Not me. For me, it's, I would have liked a lower and slower bake to get more of a development of that caramel note at the end. And also because it's a really short condole, that might have impacted the baking time. But it's very cute, really nice, dark, burnt sugar note, and nice soft interior. I'm feeling a bit doomed. Okay, so let's take on cookies. Cookies sound good. Now, this is the point where I should talk about the fact that there are a couple things that are missing here. There's the espresso cake. Well, there's a chocolate cake with espresso. There's a brownie missing with espresso. Take your nosy the theme. And then there are two cookies. There was one cookie with walnut. It was a walnut thumbprint with rhubarb jam. It looked delightful. And there was a hazelnut thumbprint. I am allergic, oh thank you, to a lot of those guys. I'm allergic to hazelnuts, walnuts, and I just can't eat coffee products. So there was no way I could judge those in fairness until you're not here. But ooh. So we have here a macaroon. So to put the macaroon macaron to rest, macaron with one O is the almond cookie and macaroon is a coconut cookie, usually bound with egg white so you can hold this shape. There's usually very little besides coconut in there and it should have a very soft interior, excuse me, and a very crunchy exterior. I like it to be super crisp. So let's check this guy out. Nice little, it's a nice little mountain of coconut. Let's get this open. You can see how it's nice and fluffy. All right, it is straight coconut. I feel like I'm eating the inside of an almond joy, just straight coconut flavor. Get some water. It is a little dry for my palate. I feel like I mentioned I'm not necessarily gonna say if something's bad or good. I'm gonna say whether or not it works for me. So that's really important in food judging. Who is this food for? Like, I don't really like cardamom very much, so maybe I'm not the intended person for some of this food. That doesn't make something bad. There is legitimately bad food. <laughs> Let's not mince words. But this is not bad. It's more, I like things a bit more moist and so it's a bit drying to me. However, I have friends who might love it to each their own. And to me, the water. Okay. Ooh, my little chocolate cookie, chalk chunk cookie. Come on, will the focus happen? No. My camera had its fall and now it's just it's had it. So we got cookie, very crisp, Ooh, little soft cookie. Feels like shortbread. Smells like chocolate shortbread. I say smells like chocolate shortbread because I'm mainly just smelling chocolate. And chocolate. Mmm. So what I think this is, is it's based off likely a recipe known as a sable. You've probably heard of these, like the world peace cookies from Dory Greenspan are a sable. It's not a shortbread. It's going to have a bit more butter, it has a bit more structure, it's a bit drier, but it has a really beautiful cocoa chocolate note just throughout it with the crispness going against the softness of the cookie dough itself and then the chocolate. This is delightful. Mm. Not gonna lie, it's probably my favorite so far is this little cookie. <laughs> All right, let's try the next cookie which also looks like it's in that kind of shortbread sable texture. This whole, and I believe, yeah, it was rolled out. And then this is probably a log cookie based on how it was cut. Classic, lovely, buttery cookie. I feel like if I was gonna get anything so far, I'd probably make sure to get the cookies because those were really nice, just 
buttery, crisp little joys. Can't complain, but I do need water. Let's do a croissant. I could really use a palate cleanser right now. I'm just tasting pure butter. This is not how I'd recommend doing this normally. I'm very aware of my limits here. And so yeah, I'm being very cautious. And that's why I'm not eating very much. I just, you, you don't do much, but look at this croissant. So, ah, yes. Hello. Looks like your bottom. There we go. Very exciting words here on the YouTubes today. So I like to see how the base of a croissant looks because it tells me just as much information as the top. Because there's a couple schools of thought when it comes to baking a croissant and that impacts layer development and impacts flavor. So I like my croissants on the dark side. This is pretty dark. It's getting almost a little burnt, which is good. And I wanna see how these layers behave, but I can feel already like it's been pretty almost lacquered in terms of like the structure. It's been pretty well baked. It's got a pretty nice butter content. Let's do this. Also, I do want to eat this because did we get a pretzel? We got a pretzel. So she has a croissant pretzel and I do want to be able to have some kind of a reference for the flavor. But here we are. Nice structure. Very buttery, very, very buttery. The dominant note is not salted butter. Just straight up butter. Is that a bad thing? No. I'm just comparing to a croissant I had in Vancouver at there there, where it had a toast flavor profile for the butter. And so I'm trying to make sure I'm thinking about it and what I'm liking versus the there there croissant. Very good croissant though. Very clean layers. I'm mainly tasting butter. Butter and then the toastiness from being baked. Very nice though. Let's compare straight up to the pretzel. So, yes, this is a croissant that's been pretzeled. So. I'm mainly happy because it's full of salt. I am a salt fiend and it's very nice. It's not a very overwhelming salt, but you're getting a lot of salt flavor. It's this guy, only much crispier and with more salt. So if you're someone who likes your salt fix, I'll get this over the croissant. If you're someone who wants me to have with tea or coffee, I'll get the croissant, right? Oh, that's, that is a lot of salt. I can see it's getting very, very salty over time, but most of these feel like they should be eaten with something else, ideally a tea or coffee, just to balance what you're eating because none of these are subtle. Let's put it that way. So let's just, let's keep going with this. We'll clear when we get to cakes and tarts because we're not done. Oh my gosh. So this is the rhubarb danish. It looks like I've got some kind of a, oh, there's a ton of vanilla in here. There's just vanilla flecks everywhere. It looks like there's, again, the poached rhubarb. no clean way to eat this. I feel like a mess, but the rhubarb is just so soft. And then you have the vanilla pastry cream and then the crispness of the Danish. This is my favorite execution of the rhubarb. It just really, as, as messy as that was, as, I, as much as I couldn't get a clean bite, that was delightful. I get some more water. Is it? Your rhubarb is just so soft and so lightly vanilla scented. Like it's the same, but rhubarb is here. Just done with more of it and so it gets more of a chance to shine. This is a Queen Amon. It's a kind of layered dough. 
If you've never heard of one, I will actually probably try and link to a great big story just did a video on them. Because it's just worth knowing about the fact that it's basically laminated dough like a croissant, only with more butter and more sugar. So it should have a really crisp topping. And this one's cardamom. We are not escaping cardamom today. Mm. Very cardamom, very crisp buttery exterior. I personally prefer my Queen Amon a bit more tender on the inside, but it's also a very small Queen Amon, which means it has more of a chance to bake out some of the moisture. But it is really delightful. Still not a fan of cardamom. It gives me more of a citrus bite in this one than in the cardamom cake. There's more of an intense initial citrus and cardamom burst, and then it kind of just becomes cardamom. So clearly I am not the target audience, but it is a delightful little treat. Dear goodness, millionaire shortbread. So it's basically the predecessor to a Twix with a nice coat of chocolate on the top. This is one of their better versions. So I should say I've bought this one a couple times and I'm normally not super sold on it for whatever reason. I am just super picky about my caramel, but today the caramel has a really nice bite. A little burnt sugar note, which is nice. And the shortbread is nice and crumbly. Also, the thin layer of chocolate makes it actually biteable, as it looks like just, you know, a nice thin layer of chocolate as opposed to being dense. It's nice. They'd be perfect with tea. I do not remember what this is, but I see pistachio. So it comes in kind of a pistachio pinwheel using the same croissant. This probably is a frangipan based on the coloration, like um, almond based. So let's try it. Mm. It's a croissant with a nut paste. It's nice and gentle. I feel like this needs coffee. I don't drink coffee, but it feels like it should go with coffee. Last of this round of baked goods, we have the pano chocolat, which I know is it's the croissant again, but I do want to taste how it behaves with the chocolate inside. Is that's kind of a critical change. So looks like they're batons or sticks. My guess is they're likely going to be a 60%. We'll find out. It's a dark mode. It's got kind of a fudgy marshmallow note that I would not associate with anything but something below 60%. It's nice. My brain says it's calibo, but that doesn't mean I'm right. It's, just, it's not a sweetness I associate with this type of Valhona chocolate. All right, so we're not done, but let's see. I'm gonna at least pick my favorite of this set and then we'll retaste it. So, mm, I think my favorites were the pretzel, the chocolate shortbread, and the cake. All right, next round. This one I believe is passion fruit. I need a plate for this. Thanks. I do love the giant poof of meringue we've got going on. Very, very fluffy. Try this guy. There we go. Cheers. Mmm. That's nice little meringue. Mmm. The meringue is a bit gritty, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, just it's a gritty meringue. This is not reinventing the wheel. This is straight up passion fruit with a crisp buttery crust, and some meringue. Nothing wrong with it, it's just, it just, what you see is exactly what you get. Next one. Ah, that's a rocket, oh no, oh no, I heard it. I feel so bad. This is lime basil, and it deserves better than me, because I had to go and wreck the meringue. Yep, oh. 
make the brain stop. Come back. Come back. Ooh. But the basil is really pretty. Don't do the noise. You're making noise. <laughs> Being very helpful, but it's everything catches noise wise. Oh, yeah. So, much denser crust. Also, what you see is what you get, but such a vibrant burst of lime basil. And, well, I'm a huge fan of citrus, and basil is just a wonderful earthiness to it. And it sort of ends in basil. It's very refreshing, almost a palate cleanser of a tart. Delightful! Alright, now to the cakes. Cake, 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 cake. We only have two cakes. Again, I did not get to have the chocolate cake because it has espresso. We've got carrot and we've got some kind of layer cake. I'm gonna get some water first though, because I'm ahem. This is not my idea of easy, I should say. I don't like trying this much at once. Normally, I'm not against it. It's just there's too many things to try and so your palate gets just overwhelmed. Not complaining. I mean, I feel like I'm having a second birthday here with the sheer amount of cake going on, but yeah. And just my palate, if there was much more, I'm actually glad that I couldn't eat everything because the palate fatigue is starting to get me a little. Basically all I taste right now is lime. All right, so this is the carrot cake and it's got cream cheese frosting. Oh my goodness. And I believe there's all still little goodies in here. Oh crud, I think it's got walnuts. I really do not like being allergic Excuse me, to life itself. Um, okay, so let's figure out what kind of nut it is first. Let's play guessing game. Is it a pecan? Is it a walnut? What is it? Yeah. Again, I should mention that I have oral allergy syndrome. I will not have a reaction just being in a room with a walnut. I just can't eat it. Let's see. I think I've got a walnut. And the other good thing is that because my reactions are so low, I can get it out of my system really fast by just rinsing my mouth with water. So this is a really low risk thing that I'm doing even with the strawberry. So definitely do not think I'm doing something like life threatening. I do not have a classical nut allergy. Still, I think, I think this is a walnut. I'm gonna try around it. Also cooked foods are safer. So if I just skip the lower part <laughs> where the nuts are, it should be pretty okay. I can at least try the cake itself. That is not remotely what I was expecting. So there are chunks of carrot in this. I can see all of the carrot and yet it is a very spice forward cake. Cream cheese is very clean, probably to offset and balance the sheer spice profile of the cake. The cake is very light, but also still pretty moist. I'm not giving it a fair chance because I do think there are walnuts in here, but very nice cake. Alright. Rinse out for safety. Last one. Actually, do we have any more? Please tell me there's no more. Okay, no more. All right, now we have the layer cake, final. All right, oh, and I'm gonna bet money this is rhubarb flavored. There we go, cake. It just said layer cake when we were at Coils. I forgot to ask in the chaos to try and make sure we got everything. So with this color and with the stringy bit sticking out, I'm gonna guess that we got a little bit of rhubarb. Let's see, this cuts like a buttercream. Looks like a buttercream, smells like a buttercream. Smells like a buttercream, actually. Smells like a lemon buttercream.
Yep. It's a buttercream. I find buttercream personally to be very heavy. I appreciate how small the amount of buttercream is. And it gives it a nice melty butter, melty feel of buttercream without being so intensely cloying that I think I'm eating pure sugar. Um, the layers are very lemon focused. If, I, if there is rhubarb in here, I'm not really tasting it as much. I'm tasting just the sheer cleanness of the rhubarb. I think if you're someone who wants a birthday cake that's like classic, but lemon, here you go. You know, there's nothing hiding here whatsoever. All right, I've tried everything. I'm getting a palate headache from just eating too much. Lots of sugar. So let's discuss my favorites and what I think is the best here. Now one problem we're gonna have in this particular case, especially is the majority dominance of rhubarb. What I am seeing here is that there's like two categories. We've got the seasonal stuff and we've got the consistent stuff like the cream scone or the kretzel which is going to be year round versus even just a seasonal danish flavor it does mean that basically if you go to coils next week if the seasons change enough you are going to have a different experience so we're going to make this judgment call based on more what i'm enjoying today <laughs> above all else because that's what matters here is what i've had in this moment so let's see of these one of my favorites so far. Today, these are my four favorites. The rhubarb and cardamom cake, the chocolate shortbread, and the rhubarb danish, and the lime basil. I'm gonna try all these again, and we'll pick our winner from these. The contenders. Get a clean fork. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm covered in crumbs. I can't get this on camera, but I'm literally covered in croissant crumbs right now. Like, my legs are just croissant. All right, let's do this. Final four. Vacuuming this room is gonna be a nightmare, but these aren't. So, actually, let's start with the cake. I'm gonna go approximately from how overwhelming the flavors were. So we're gonna go rhubarb, lime, chocolate. Chocolate always overwhelms your palate. I did everything out of order today because I was overwhelmed by the sheer number of stuff. But normally you do wanna end with chocolate because it just, it's, it takes over. So let's start with the cake. It's a really delightful pound cake. I do wish that it had a little bit more rhubarb because the rhubarb to me is what sells it. It's what shines. And it has just enough cardamom to be limey, but not in a way that I find it overpowering. Delightful. Yes, I'm gonna drink between each because I do need to clean my palate as much as possible now. Alright, next, the Danish. Ignoring the fact that I cannot eat that cleanly to save my life. Here's hoping it doesn't look too bad in edit. This is a delightfully tart, soft, silky soft rhubarb with really nice crispness and butterness from the Danish and that little vanilla overlay from the pastry cream. It's really good. My problem is really the, Dan the Danish versus the rhubarb. As much as I love this, as you can see from two bites, I've eaten most of the rhubarb because I'm having trouble biting it in a way that actually breaks the rhubarb. I'm not just trying to be weird on camera, most of the time though. So as much as I love it, it needs more rhubarb to count to the fact that I'm going to ruin our rhubarb by bite three. As it is though, just like looking at it from the contrast of flavors, the rhubarb is superb. It is some of the best poached rhubarb I've ever had in just terms of its softness. And I love rhubarb, so I'm really happy with this. I just wish more rhubarb, forever more rhubarb. Okay. All right, fork, <laughs> clean fork. Now, lime basil with meringue. Fair 
very clean, very bright, nice buttery crispness from the tart shell. I am finding the tart shell a touch dry here, but I do love just how clean and fresh the tart overall is. Last, certainly not least, the chocolate cookie. It really is like eating a crispy brownie. All right. I still think these are my, my top four. I'm not upset about these at all. I think of them, my favorite's the Danish. I am desperately wishing that it had smaller pieces of rhubarb so I could get more in each bite. But looking at it as really, really expertly done rhubarb, just soft and tart and vanilla and just intense but not overwhelming or overpoweringly rhubarb. It is so springtime delightful. I don't know, it is, it is so good. It is just so, it just makes me so happy. And that's really hard to beat. I think the lime basil tart here is number two and the chocolate shortbread is number three with the cake coming in as a very respectable four. I think if I just had these, I would have a really nice day, but I would definitely want some tea just to have a really good palate cleanser because these are not subtle flavors, especially these two. Like, they are in your face. Oh, my goodness. So, that is my take on Coil's Bake Shop. I will be doing a summary video where I'll be retesting this just because I want to see if the next flavor still means it's something where this is my favorite or there's maybe new tarts next week so there'll be a, definitely a Seattle in 60 seconds video covering that so that is tiny table mini mukbang i'd love to know in the comments below if there's something you'd like me to try next in seattle or just in general because i'm always looking for new things to talk dessert with you peeps about and if you're interested in more mukbang i will throw a playlist here and with that i will catch you next time Bye, us